What's up everyone? This is an iPhone 16 screen replacement. You know it, I already cracked it, the iPhone 16, and we're gonna do the screen replacement. I'm gonna show you what to do if you can't turn it off when you do the repair, so then you guys know that it works. Grab your P2 star bit screwdriver and unscrew the two screws on the bottom just like always. And then we'll get ready to heat up the screen. Heat up the screen for 10 minutes. If you're just gonna pry it off and the screen is completely shattered, just use a heating pad. But I'm gonna use my Apple OEM screen remover tool just so then I can get the screen off without it breaking because I plan to use the uh, broken screen after I try out the new screen because I can't afford a screen replacement yet. The one thing I can afford is to possibly break the entire phone because I'm used to just disconnecting the battery and then taking off the screen, but this time the screen worked and I could turn off the phone, but I wanted to show you guys how to fix it if the screen, you couldn't turn off the phone all the way and how to turn it back on after you do the repair. And if you turn it off anyways, find my iPhone still on so it's not even fully powered down if you turned it off. After we got the screen fully off, I'm gonna show you what tools you're gonna need. You're gonna need your star bit, your Y000 screwdriver, you're gonna need your PH000 screwdriver, plastic guitar pick, straight tweezers, bended tweezers, a plastic spudger, a suction cup, a heating pad or some sort of heating source, the new screen, and some alcohol. I'll leave you links. You'll want to pry off the screen. Luckily, the suction cups pulled off the screen majority of the way and got it started. So you'll want to use a plastic pry tool around the top edges, especially around the camera, because you don't want to scratch up the front camera with a metal pry tool and you don't want to short something inside the phone. So you'll use a plastic pry tool around the edges while you're prying. It opens from the right to the left, just like so. And then we can see inside the phone and get the screen and the proximity sensor disconnected. So we can do this screen replacement. Please like and subscribe if you like this video. Check out my channel, check out my other videos, and you could also watch me try to break this phone so I could make you guys this video of a screen replacement guide, but I feel like it was impossible to break, so I feel like I'm not gonna get a lot of views, so please, share my videos. See, you can still see the phone's turned on and it says it's too hot, which is, that means it's too hot to touch and it's ready to pry off. It opens from the left to the right and then you just set up the screen just like so and use a Y000 screw to unscrew the bracket holding down the screen and also a Y000 screw holding down the bracket for the proximity sensor. Once the screws are removed, you can remove the brackets. And how to do it, you have to remove the little latches and use bended tweezers to lift them out at an angle. Since the phone is still powered on, be very careful not to touch the board with your tweezers while you take out the brackets. We're going to take a look here. See, the screen is on, and I am going to disconnect it while it's turned on, just to show you guys I disconnected it while it was turned on just as if it was broken and you couldn't turn it off at all and you didn't disconnect the battery. Use your flat end of your plastic spudger to disconnect the connections. Perfect, now you can pull off the screen. The proximity sensor. To do that, we'll use a PH000 screwdriver and remove the one screw holding down the bracket that holds down the proximity sensor. And we'll also have to apply heat to uh, remove it and use some alcohol as well and I'll show you right here in the video. You're going to want to apply heat to the uh, proximity sensor through the screen on the heating pad or with a heat gun. You'll also use your plastic pry tools like your plastic spudger and also plastic guitar pick to wiggle the tool in between the connector and the back of the screen and you'll also want to use some alcohol a little bit and not too much. But there is one thing on the bright side. If the proximity sensor breaks, Face ID will still work. And it's working. I tried it without the proximity sensor installed during this repair. And Face ID worked without the proximity sensor attached. So which that means, if it broke and you had to replace it, it should still work. Woohoo! That's a change. A lot less stressful now. 
And I'm sorry for the viewers that wanted to watch me do that. I did record it, but I didn't feel like it was necessary for this video. I want it to be straightforward for you guys so you know how to do the screen replacement. All right, so just wiggle your tool underneath the proximity sensor as careful as possible because you don't want to have to order another part. You might need to apply extra heat to the light sensor to get it out. I had to go apply some extra heat and then also um, get my fine pointed tweezers and then work my way around the edges of it so I can pull it out. I wanted to reuse the screen for this repair so I decided I would try to take it out as careful as possible. Now it's time to install the proximity sensor on the new screen. And I forgot to point out, I got this new screen and it isn't from Apple. You can get an Apple screen where it won't show the screen message, but you'll have to wait longer shipping. But I got this screen from InjuredGadgets.com. They were the only ones that had it available. And also, um, I think Apple probably doesn't even have it available yet on their website to do the Apple service self-service program. And I'll leave a link in the description for both ways to get the part and I just want to make sure you guys know a full disclosure that it won't be an Apple genuine screen if you order it from InjuredGadgets.com or anywhere else like Amazon. All right, let's get ready to connect the screen. Oh yeah, we got to put our adhesive down. I like to just put it over top of my already existing adhesive because I don't have the vacuum sealing machine. I just uh, double side it up and also I worry about breaking something inside the phone scratching my metal pry tool around the edges of the phone you could use a plastic uh, guitar pick or flat end of your plastic spudger if you really want to do that but honestly I don't think it's worth the time it's up to you it's your phone in my opinion the pre-cut adhesive sometimes doesn't uh, stick very well and if it doesn't stick well when you lay it down and you pull the last tab of adhesive and then it just strings along across the back of the screen and not on the edges, then I mean, then what's the point of taking off the adhesive? That's why it's nice to have an extra layer of adhesive underneath it just in case it doesn't stick. All right. Anyways, if you guys need help with doing this repair, you can always mail me your repairs. Email me at mark at icarefargo.com and we can set that all up. Next, we'll connect the screen to the phone and we'll start with the proximity sensor. And I normally just like to use my finger because I can feel the click and feel it click into place. And then that's how I know it is for surely connected. After we uh, connect the screen and the proximity sensor, we'll grab our brackets and our Y000 screwdriver and screw them down. They have to go back in a certain angle, so it's nice to use some fine pointed tweezers to get in the right angle so then you can lay it down on the latch and then lay it down just like so. I want to reach out to all my subscribers and tell you thank you for all your feedback to allow me to make my videos so much better. My sound's gotten better. The quality's gotten better. So thank you. Please just leave me a comment with any feedback. I much appreciate it. Here's the big moment, everyone. Will it turn on after I unplugged it while the screen was turned on? It's not turning on right now. And I plugged it in and it didn't turn on either. Next, I'm going to try what we call a force restart, which you click press the volume up, click press the volume down, and then click and hold the side button until it turns on and gives you that nice shiny Apple logo. And it works. It's worth it. I'm just going to speed up the rest of the video. You guys can take it from here, I'm sure. You got this far.